take a look at the objectives of this module. By the end of this module, you will be able to describe the method of testing earthing resistance, describe the design and application considerations for earthing, list the Indian standard rules specified for earthing, explain about the maintenance of earthing pits, list the dimensions required for deep bore earthing, discuss earthing design considerations in HD transmission line. List the specifications for tower earthing. Identify the features of lightning arresters. List the precautionary measures for earthing of lightning arresters. So, let us get started with the first topic. We have already learned some terms associated with earthing in the first module. Here are a few more. Click on each tab to learn about them. Earthing mat is a grounding system formed by a grid of horizontally buried conductors which serves to dissipate the earth fault current to earth and also as an equipotential bonding conductor system. As you can see the grid has conductors and the galvanized iron wire or GI wire connects the mat to the installation above the earth's surface. This is what an earthing mat looks like. Our next topic is about earthing resistance. We have learned about soil resistivity in the previous screen. Now let us see what is earthing resistance all about. As you know earthing resistance is the resistance of the conductor that leads the fault current to earth. Earth resistance includes resistance of electrodes, contact resistance between soil and electrode and resistance of soil or soil resistivity. But how do we determine which is the right place for earthing? And what are the other things to be kept in mind before going for earthing? Let us discuss in the next topic. This topic is going to be really interesting. We have discussed so many things about earthing, but how do we determine which place is fit or what are the other technicalities to be considered before providing an earthing connection? Let us see. So once you decide that an earthing connection has to be given, these are the points that need to be considered. The selection of conductor, the selection of point where the conductor is to be earthed, the selection of size of earth wire, lead arrangement, protection and mode of connection to the earth electrodes. The selection of earth electrodes and the limitation of their resistances to the ground. Fault current of the system and location of earthing station. Let us now look at a few more key points to consider when going for an earthing connection. They are selecting a suitable site, checking the extent of moisture therein and checking the presence of suitable salts. Click on each image to learn more. A site shall be so chosen that is not naturally well drained. Water should not be flowing over it. If an imported fill excise has been carried out, in these cases, deeper driving of the electrodes may be necessary to reach layers. The normal moisture content of soil ranges from 10% in dry seasons to 35% in wet seasons and approximate average may be 16-18%. to 18%. To reduce soil resistivity, it is necessary to dissolve in the mixture normally contained in the soil some substance which is highly conductive in its water solution. The most commonly used substance is common salt, mixed with fine sand in suitable proportion. 
Now something about earthing connections. There are some specifications for the earthing wire and connections as well. So firstly, the earth wire and connections should be mechanically strong. Next, you all know that electrical equipment are connected to earth using two types of conductors. Naked wires and insulated wires. So for earthing, insulated wires should be used as earth lead for system earthing. And their voltage grade is determined by the earthing type. If it is solid earth, then the insulation should have a rating of 1100 volts. If it is resistance earthing, then the insulation should have a rating of one third of the system voltage. Let us move on to learn a little more about earth wire and connection. Let us now see what kind of connections are used for different types of earthing. Click on each tab to learn more. For equipment earthing, galvanized steel flat bar or mild steel rod shall be used as earth lead and painted with green or yellow as specified by IS3043. Flat shall be connected with nut and bolts and welded connection for rod. In case of system earthing, earth lead shall be mechanically protected by providing hume pipe throughout its length when it starts from transformer cell. We have already discussed about earth electrode. Let us see if you remember it. Read the question, select the correct option and submit it.